Right, today we have Pardis 2011, the release candidate. Now, Pardis is a Turkish distribution which is developed by the scientific department of the Turkish government, as far as I can tell. People correct me if I'm wrong. Now, Pardis is a KDE distribution. It's based in KDE 4.5.4, which is the latest stable KDE release. And it is a DVD download of about 1.2, 1.3 gigs, depending on whether you get the live image or the installation image. Now, there is a difference between the two. The live image runs only as a live CD. You can't install it. The inst installation DVD is self-explanatory. You can only install it. You can't run it as a live system. It would be good to see these two come together and they don't, and not have to bother with two different CDs. But then again, I think that has something to do with their own package management system. All right, let's get down to Pardis Linux 2011. I have searched high and low for a good KDE distribution that is stable, that it's fast, it doesn't slug around with its KWIN compositing effects, that it doesn't have issues with sound, and I'm happy to let you know that I'm pretty sure I found one. Pardis Linux is a pleasure to use from start to finish. It's got to be one of the most user-friendly and newbie-friendly KDE distributions on the planet as of right now. I have tried PC Linux OS, Mandriva, OpenSUSE, Kubuntu, Fedora KDE and a huge slew of independents and I have not come across a KDE distribution as polished or as professional as Pardis Linux 2011. So what sets Pardis Linux apart? Well basically it comes down to their wizards. Now Pardis Linux has a wonderful installer that is extremely descriptive and I wish I had screenshots of it but sadly I only got the 64-bit of the installation image and I do not have true virtualization enabled on this particular system. The processor can't handle it so I can't run 64-bit virtual images. But I did get the live CD of the 32-bit so I'll have screenshots of that later. But basically the wizard which sets you up, which installs the system, is extremely easy to follow. It's very pretty and it describes everything in the system and describes what sets Pardis Linux apart and it is really really done to a professional level that it is really comparable to something that a professional corporation would put out that explains everything about the system, how to get stuff done, and it is just marvelous. I have not come across a better installer yet. The one that comes on Ubuntu and Linux Mint pairs pretty closely in comparison, but just for the sheer looks of this installer alone, you should give it a go. It is a wonderful installer and I can't recommend the distribution enough for that alone. Secondly, on boot up, you get a lovely wizard to set up your desktop to customize it just the way you want. Now, this is just what Linux needs because Linux has infinite customization abilities. But unfortunately, this is, a, this is often hidden from the user, particularly with KDE, as stuff is often hidden behind really obscure dialog boxes. And they fix this by doing the Captain Configuration Manager. Now, as you can see here, it can configure everything from the way your desktop looks to the way you interact with your desktop, the themes, the wallpapers, everything from start to finish. And by the time you finish, you're in your own customized KDE distribution. It's just the way you want it to. Once you've fully customized your desktop to the way you like it, remember this is only after about five minutes of use. You can then go into your applications and I have not installed any extra applications whatsoever, none. By default, in internet, you get a choice of a huge slew of browsers. You get Firefox 4, you get Chromium Web Browser, you get Conqueror Web Browser, and you get Reconk, which is the web-based Conqueror Browser. You get the KDE microblogging client. You also get another blogging client, which is more advanced and slightly more configurable. You get a BitTorrent client. You get a download manager. You get a feed reader and an internet dial-up tool, an IRC client, mail client, news reader, remote desktop client. They give you the whole slew. Under education, they also give you the desktop globe, which is very helpful. And I'm pretty sure other people have videos on this, but it's basically like a Google Earth type deal. They also give you a few board games logic games and toys and under graphics they give you the acquire images for scanning dj dj view for viewing your raw photos dng video image converter for converting your raw photo images document viewer exposure blending fax viewer the gimp image scanning image viewer paint program digicam which is one of the best photo management tools for linux it's definitely for professionals it's great and show photo which is the viewer and editor screen captures and they've even got more here for the K ruler and the color chooser which of course is stock KDE 
under multimedia. They have Armorock, they've got a CD ripper, a disc burner, which of course is K3B. They've got Gnome M player for all those files that don't quite play well under Caffeine. They've got Caffeine, the standard media player for KDE. SM player, which plays, again, those awkward files. Pulse Audio Preferences, Sound Mixer, and the Video Editor Caden Live, which is what I use nearly every day. Um, extremely happy to see this in a distribution finally a decent video editor included by default and under office another thing of noteworthy mention is that they include the libra office suite which is the first linux distribution on the planet to install libra office by default which i'm extremely impressed with they have done a great job to get it out there and get people using it it's wonderful They've also got the extension manager and they've got a web page creation which doesn't come standard with a lot of OpenOffice slash LibreOffice installs. Great to see. They've also got the K organizer, they've got the Ocular again, K address book, and of course contact, which I've talked about before. Under system, they have add and remove software, which is their package manager, and I'll get to that in a bit. They've got desktop sharing, drop down terminal, file manager, which is of course Dolphin, partition editor, processors, removable media, screen resize and rotate. They've got a lot of the stock standard K tools, which some distributions leave out in favor of their own. But it's great to see that although you can customize this KDE distribution, it is still mostly based on the stock standard KDE. Now you'll notice that the icons look a bit different. This is, the, this is the custom icon set that Partis Linux have developed for this distribution. And I'd have to say, they look incredibly cool. Now, of course, you've got, your, you've got your places here under the Computers tab. You've got your Recently Used. And, of course, you've got your Leave. And that's all stock K, uh, KDE. The other thing which I am really appreciative of with KDE, I'm running this in a 64-bit environment, and it picked up everything out of the box. I'm talking everything. My wireless was automatically detected. My Ethernet was automatically detected. Pulse audio and my audio card was automatically de detected. I had no issues setting up screencasting. I didn't even have to install a screencasting program. I didn't have to install Pulse audio. K-Mixer worked right off the bat. And, I ha and this is the first time that I've been able to do a decent screencast under KDE. And to be honest, I couldn't be happier. They also install a lot of extra themes by default, which I'm going to have a look at now. They've got the, of course, they've got Air, Air for Netbooks, Aya, Blend, Elegance, Heron, Oxygen, Silicon, and Slim Glow, which is what I'm using here. You can, of course, get new themes. And they also, in the, in the Captain configuration tool, they also give you the choice of what color you want your desktop to be. I feel like I have too many good things to say about Partis Linux. I am extremely impressed. This is hands down my favorite KDE distribution that I have ever tried. And trust me, I have tried quite a lot. I've been following the GNOME boat for quite a while and that's where I've stayed as my default. And I've been searching for a decent KDE distribution and I finally found one in Partis Linux 2011. And this is only the release candidate. It's been extremely stable. I've done all my daily work on this system. It has not crashed once. I have not had KWIN crash. I have not had the sound server crash. I've not had X11 crash. I've used all the web browsers. I've used all the programs basically that are installed on it. Contact works. LibreOffice, no worries at all. Digicam, great. GIMP works. Firefox 4, great. This is an impressive distribution and I'm really happy that this is the direction that Linux is going. As the package manager, which is shown here, it's easy to understand and it's more like add remove programs that Ubuntu used to use before they developed the software center. Again, it's easy to understand. They've categorized everything in their repository into sensible categorizations that everyone is used to. You have your installable packages, installed packages, and updates. Everything about this distribution looks so professional. The boot up screen, the grub screen, even the checking for updates has its own polish. They have very good descriptions here as to what each of the applications are, and when you click on them, it gives you the website, the release, the installed version, repository, and the package size. Wonderful. You can even press on details, and it will give you more details about the package, and you can even rate this package and see the ratings for this package. Brilliant. The other issue is that I am behind an authenticated proxy a lot of the time, and so I have to use a username and password to get onto the internet. Now. 
a lot of the problems that I've had with KDE in the past have not let me get onto the internet, either that or I get this endless loop of the KDE wallet manager trying to get my password to connect to the net. I have not that had that issue at all. Everything is working just as it should and I feel like this is the way that KDE ought to be. Wonderful distribution, can't recommend it enough, and if you want a solid KDE experience which comes with every single application you are ever going to need, you need to install Partis Linux 2011. The download links are a little bit obscure, but if you go to DistroWatch and you go to the Partis webpage, you can see they've got download links there, which link to an FTP server, and although I am way over here in Australia and the servers are probably somewhere in Turkey, I used a download manager and it was quite fast. I was very surprised. It would be nice to see some more download links. It would also be nice to see some more repository mirrors as they only have a few scattered through Europe. But in all honesty, this is only due to the fact that it's a rather obscure distribution. Not many people know about it. Therefore, they can't really afford the bandwidth to have their repositories mirrored. Of course, I think this will all change when people realize how good Partis Linux is and just what a graceful user experience that this distribution can offer.